how to read the textual apparatus of a Greek New Testament using the UBS 5th edition at Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. First thing is the raise number one, which relates to the textual problem under consideration. And then the bold one refers to verse one. The squiggly brackets mean that we're talking about the uh, rating given by the UBS committee when they were establishing the text. And the rating of C is a rather low rating. And so they've opted to put an Efeso in the text, which is in Ephesus, and they've given that a low rating. It could have been an A or a B. A C means that they had difficulty as a committee in deciding on what to print here. You'll also note that there are square brackets around an Efeso. That doesn't always show up with every textual problem. What it means is that text critics more broadly in scholarship are not agreed about whether those words are authentic or not, or original. So um, the square brackets don't mean quite the same thing as the letter C at the bottom, but they often go hand in hand because when you get square brackets, that indicates scholarly uncertainty. The low rating of a C indicates that the committee in particular had difficulty in deciding. Then you get the um, words themselves uh, signaling these are the words that you're about to get evidence in support of. And so their decision to print an FSO is supported by the following witnesses, beginning with Olive, but not the original hand of Olive. Olive is Codex Sinaiticus, and the raised two means that we're dealing with a correction in Codex Sinaiticus, not the original hand. The original hand is going to be signaled by an asterisk or a star uh, next to the witness. And so whenever you get a corrected reading, like we do here with Olive 2, be on the lookout for an original hand being written somewhere else in the footnotes. So Olive with a raised 2 means we're dealing with a later correction, um, but Codex Sinaiticus has a series of corrections not just one pass or one round of corrections. There are corrections made uh, in a series of centuries as they go by. And it could have been a raised one. Here it's a raised two, meaning this is the second round of corrections. Now the UBS doesn't tell you when those corrections were made, but it was made subsequent to the original copying process at a later date. Then. Uh, Codex Alexandrinus, sometimes uh, represented by 0, 2, and then Vaticanus is B, sometimes signaled by 0, 3. Also a corrected reading with a raised 2. Now it's just a coincidence that the particular correction here is uh, assigned to 2, as well as Codex Sinaiticus. Um, not every correction is specifically listed as a two, but this indicates something similar that Codex Vaticanus has a series of corrections that were made at different points uh, in history, and this is referring to the second round of corrections. And it doesn't specify the century in which this was made, it just simply says that this isn't the first round of corrections, it's not even the first hand of Vaticanus, it's the second round of corrections. And the DFG, are straightforward. The, these are majuscules, just like the uh, like Aleph A and B, um, but these don't imply uh, any corrections or anything like that. And then you get C with a raised letter C. Now remember that the Greek letter C is just representing a majuscule in the same way that the other um, symbols are also representing majuscules. Um, you can get a Latin letter like A, B, D for a majuscule, but also a Greek letter like C. And also you can get a number like 075 is also representing a majuscule. There are a variety of ways that this one group of manuscripts can be represented. And now the raised letter C is slightly confusing because it too references a correction that's been made to the manuscript C but it's not quite the same idea as what we found with Codex Sinaiticus. Why is it a C and not a two? Well, because 
Uh, earlier I mentioned that Sinaiticus has a series of corrections made in different centuries that are assigned different numbers. The manuscript C is just simply listed as a correction because it's not parsing out a different series or a variety of uh, series of uh, corrections. It's just saying there's one pass, one round of corrections, and it uh, is being applied here. Now, immediately after that, in parenthesis, is the original hand of Psi. The uh, asterisk indicates we're talking about the original hand, the original act of copying, is illegible here. So what they're trying to clarify is that they don't know, the committee doesn't know what the original hand of C read. That it's illegible, it's unreadable. So they're not going to print it here and they're not going to print it down on the other side for the omission because they don't know what it said. The reason for this is easy to understand if you just look at a picture of C because the first few lines of Ephesians have been completely overwritten in new ink so that you can't read what's underneath. That's not the kind of correction you normally get in a manuscript like Aleph or B. The kinds of corrections you're used to in those manuscripts are marginal corrections or interlinear corrections where you can plainly see the original hand and the later hand adding in a word or deleting a word or what have you. In this particular case, the sort of correction we find in C has completely defaced the text underneath, and so it's illegible. Two more majuscules, 075 and 0150. And then after those, we begin the minuscules, beginning with 33 and following. There's a long line of minuscules here that are listed. Um, and one of them is worth noting, 424 is the original hand of 424. And remember that asterisk means the original hand, and it's going to imply that we need to be on the lookout for a corrected version of 424, and we will find that in just a moment. Then there's two more minuscules, and then you get biz. Biz is um, the way to signal the majority of manuscripts. So it doesn't refer to one, it refers to many, many, uh, the vast majority of manuscripts are Byzantine in text form, and so they can be grouped together as they normally all read the same thing. So here, biz refers to the vast majority. Then following that are square brackets that refer to KLP. This is slightly confusing because these are majuscules, but they're out of sequence. So they are, in principle, the same as DFG. Um, they're just majuscules. But they are listed right after biz, and they're put in square brackets because they have a Byzantine text. So KL and P have a Byzantine text, even though they're majuscules, and so they are brought here right after biz out of sequence just to identify them with the Byzantine majority. Then you get lect, which is a uh, still a uh, group of Greek manuscripts, but these are lectionaries. And whenever you get lect, that means that this is the agreement of the majority of lectionaries that are extant. So you could get lectionaries parsed out individually. Here they're grouped together. IT then refers to the Itala, and now we're beginning to talk about versions or early translations. And the Itala refers to the Old Latin. And Old Latin basically refers to a tradition of Latin manuscripts that is independent of the Vulgate. Before it was standardized and centralized, there are Old Latin that were independent of that. And specific manuscripts are then identified. These are particular Old Latin codices that are listed by name, not just as a group. And then you get the Vulgate, and then you get the Syriac, and two traditions of the Syriac, the Peshitta and the Harklian. Then you get the Armenian tradition, the Ethiopic tradition, Georgian tradition, and the Old Church Slavonic tradition. And those are all the versions. And all of these, to reiterate, are in support of the inclusion of NFSO. Then you get um, church fathers, 
beginning with Pseudo Ignatius, and then Chrysostom and Theodore. Then you get a semicolon, and this is because the apparatus is giving you the Greek fathers first, then a semicolon, and then the Latin fathers. With one minor exception, Theodore is Greek speaking, but his original works are not extant anymore in their original Greek. We know them in Latin translation. That's what that um, qualification means. Then we move to the Latin fathers, the Western fathers, Victorinus of Rome, Ambrosiaster, Jerome, and Pelagius. Those are all, again, in support of the inclusion of in Ephesus in the text. Then the double slash means we're moving to um, another uh, reading within this variation unit, and there's only two in this case. There is the inclusion of NFSO and the omission of NFSO. So two possibilities within this variation unit. Everything we've talked about so far has been in support of the inclusion of NFSO, or in Ephesus. Now we'll talk about the omission of the words in question. First, in evidence for the omission is Papyrus 46. Then the original hand of Olive, or Codex Sinaiticus, which we saw earlier, the corrected reading of Sinaiticus has the words inserted. Vaticanus, or B, again, the original hand is being indicated by that asterisk. Then those are the end of the majuscules and papyri, and now we have minuscules, 6, 424, corrected version of 424, and then 1739, so three minuscules, two majuscules, and one papyrus. Then we go on to church fathers. There's no versional witnesses listed here, but we go on to two church fathers, Marcion, according to Tertullian. Now, that means that we don't have Marcion's work. Um, we have what Marcion said in Tertullian's work. That is, when we read Tertullian, he tells us what Marcion said. Um, and so we don't have it from Marcion himself, but we do have testimony in Tertullian of what Marcion had. And then origin is followed by vid. Vid refers to the fact that this is apparently what Origen read. So vid will often show up when there's a manuscript that's damaged, there's some kind of uh, thing that's obscuring a reading, maybe an ink blob or some sort of damage that prevents us from being 100% confident about a reading. But vid means apparently. Um, apparently Origen uh, attests to the omission of NFSO from Ephesians 1.1. 1, 1. Then the final three are um, modern translations. So they're not ancient testimony, they are modern Bible translations. B.J. and T.O.B. refer to two different French translations, and then D.H.H. refers to a Spanish translation. The UBS apparatus lists those when they disagree or when they depart from the chosen reading up here. So there are other um, translations that could have been included, um, but you can assume that they agree with the committee's decision unless they're being listed. So in this case, those three translations disagree with the reading that's been chosen by the committee. So let's uh, summarize and recap. In Ephesians 1.1, 1, 1, the UBS lists one textual variant concerning the words NFSO or in Ephesus. The support for the inclusion of those words uh, is everything here, and everything here relates to the inclusion of NFSO. Everything after uh, that point relates to evidence for the uh, omission of NFSO from that uh, sentence in Ephesians.